Kabbalah is an attempt to describe the indescribable. And it's very important, because when I grew up in a secular house in California, San Francisco, California, I'm a second generation Californian, San Franciscan, it was like, I didn't even have support to say there was a soul or a God, in a way. It's just like, that was kind of laughed at, in a way. But I had experiences. And so when I got into and I heard about, later when I learned with Zalman, he was the first one who taught me about Kabbalah, it was like, wow, I know these places. I, I've experienced this. And it's giving me a language to describe what I didn't have before. I studied psychology. I studied all these different forms of trying to describe the spiritual worlds that I knew. But, and, and Kabbalah was the way. There's God the giver, and there's what God created, which is the receivers and the vessels. There's the light in the vessel. And we as vessels are created to receive God's light, and God just wants to give us the most abundant goodness possible, pleasure as possible. And yet, because of the world we're in, our default is to receive for ourselves alone, you know, in a selfish, egotistical way. And that's okay as a child, you know, you learn to, to experience the lack and the desire for more. That's growing the vessel, so to speak. But at a certain point in our growing, we put in the extra. We don't, it doesn't comfortable to always receive. So there's this wanting to be like God, wanting to be a giver. It's natural. It's a part of our soul being, which is like the essence the same as God. And in that place, when we learn and awaken to the need and the desire to give, then there's this whole transformation of the spiritual path. One of the ways we learn to receive in order to give is we learn to say no. And the mitzvah teach us you know, certain things you say no to because it would be receiving for yourself alone. So that we say no is like returning the light, saying no to the light, but the light stays and wants to come back. You know, and there's what's called the hitting of the, the or makif, the, the outside light with the inner, saying, come, I wanna, I'm supposed to give you pleasure. And I'm saying, no, I can't take any more in now because it would be for myself alone. And then when it comes back and forth, like a guest who, who uh, a host who's trying to tell the guest, you can eat with me, I want to, you can give me pleasure to eat with me. And the, the person who's hungry says, no, no, because he doesn't want to receive anymore. And the dynamic between the two creates a new vessel for the light to come in. So finally, the person who's come, the guest says, oh, I'd be giving to you, I mean to myself, I'd be giving to my host if I accept this meal. So he eats without, not from the place of receiving for himself alone, the appetite, but from the place of giving. It's not a judgmental place. It's a place of noticing, of awareness. What is my motivation when I act? It's always mixed for us, I'm not exotic, you know, but just how much? And what is my real desire? You know, is it for wealth or for fame? Or is it really to be close to God? Is that what's inspiring me? And how can I, you know, act on that more? And how can I refine that more? And how can I be tolerant that everybody has their different place and different position and not be judgmental with them either? How it's relevant for my life? How this works for me? What am I doing? What are my goals? What are my lacks? How do I act? What's my motivation for things? It's raising awareness and helpful if it's raising awareness with somebody else as a witness, so you're sharing that evolution. You know, it's not something that's just a personal sit on a mountain in the abstract. It, it's really, Kabbalah to me is meant to help us evolve as human beings into our fullness, you know, into Adam, <laughs> into people who are aware of Hashem's influence and, and presence always, and and help other people just by who we are. In other words, if we can develop ourselves and be better, and we can work with someone else to help encourage us, and we suggest small groups, then we, we're modeled by who we are and how we act in the world. You know, first of all, he says non-judgment for oneself, awareness, but also non-judgment for someone else. 